Hey, you guys. So what's your message right now? What do you need to hear right now? What's going on? What's happening? Okay. What's the message, guys? Feels like I'm talking to is, is someone out there is feeling really um contemplative. Like you're really thinking about things, you're diving into what's the purpose of my life? What's my place in this world? Where do I belong? Where do I fit in? But it's not on a physical level anymore. It's not on the level of physicality in the sense of um I look a certain way, so I belong a certain place, or I speak a certain language, so I belong in a certain place, right? Like, it, it's not about that sense of belonging. It's the sense of belonging of where do people feel the same that I feel? It's not even about thinking, because you can deal with people not thinking like you, like we can have open conversations, we can do all that. But it's this feeling of where do people feel the same way about the same things that I do? And where you can have heartfelt conversations, because it really feels as if everybody right now is in their own unique feeling bubble, and their own unique perceptive bubble. So there's this maturing process that is happening. Unfortunately, we associate maturation subconsciously with separation. So separation from parents, from the familial structure, from childhood, there's there's some kind of a separation that's involved, kind of like cutting through the umbilical cord. And so when we're thinking about a sense of belonging, it's, it's a sense of belonging while remaining separate. <laughs> so trying to find, you know, that bigger bubble where your little bubble can can feel the same and flow the same. But feelings don't have separation. Feelings are what connect. They're what um, connect us to one another. A shared feeling is a shared energetic space. It's a shared field of consciousness. And so in order to feel with someone else, like have empathy or compassion, you, you have to let that separation consciousness down and realize that for this moment, we're vibing on the same frequency, we're sharing the same space, we're breathing the same air, we're sharing the same heartbeat. And that seems really hard for you because there is a part of you that wants that separateness for whatever reasons, protection, self-evaluation to be able to see yourself, to be able to um, correct yourself. It's it's not always about just getting what you want. It's also about, um, yeah, being able to self-evaluate, right? So if you're blended with someone else, you're not able to self-evaluate and, and gauge where are you at and where are you going next and what's your next on your pathway. The card that came up for you that inspired this is the King of Wands. And he's sitting here contemplating life, contemplating everything contemplating what's his next step this is it says here i have been with you wherever you have gone and i have cut off all of your enemies from before you now i will make your name great like the names of the greatest men on earth this is king david as he sits and takes on his position as king so it feels as if you're ready to step into your dominion of consciousness you're you're ready to take that step you're you've you've grown right you've absolutely grown and you're ready to take that step and and really transform everything around you start doing something with what you who you are and what you what you know and so it really feels like on the one hand, you want to go out there in the world and make your mark and do certain things. But on the other hand, you're you're kind of hesitant and reticent because the world seems to be a place that doesn't value sensitivities like yours or things like yours or information like yours that doesn't value what you have to offer. And you feel like you have to put yourself into a certain um, range of frequency or into a certain look almost, in order for you to be accepted. And there is something to be said about looks, because I notice it myself with, um, for example, my hair. <laughs> and every Black woman will know about the hair thing. Like, we, we've all talked about it, mentioned it numerous times, but for some reason, it doesn't go away. It's something that seems to be very triggering, almost, to other ethnicities to other um you know it, it, it's really interesting how people react 
to natural black hair that grows naturally from their scalp that way. It's it's even though people know black people exist and they've known it for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, the hair is still a source point of fascination. And I, I almost want to say it's more fascinating than the differences between, um, for example, Asians and how they look. And um, although very, very beautiful, everyone is so beautiful, so such a testimony to the magnificence and the the um, creativity of our God. But when it comes to black hair, there's so much that's involved with that. It's almost a political statement to wear your hair naturally. And some of you know that look that some people get, like you're wearing your hair out and it's just natural. And maybe you had a bad hair day. Who cares? Everybody's allowed a bad hair day, but not black people. So you get that look of almost it's a little bit of scorn, but almost anger, anger. There's this like flash of anger almost that comes up, which is really interesting sometimes in some people and their reactions to just hair. I've spoken about this before. So there's a deep subconscious programming here that some of you are, are um, battling or fighting or conforming to or wrestling with or you name it, where some of you feel you have to fall into a certain look or a certain um, type of expression. And others of you are saying like, rebelling against it and saying, heck no, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm now I'm going to go down my way. But there's a sadness that flows through all of this, that the world is the way it is. And so you're gauging, how do I express myself? How do I be my full self? How do I put myself out there? How do I live my life? How do I live my purpose and my mission? How do I find my people? How do I find this, this bubble of belonging while retaining myself. Some of you, it has to do with sensitivity, right? Because you're feeling like I can't step out into the world being as sensitive as I am because I'm going to get blasted. I'm going to get flattened. So you you have to put up this, this wall of protection in order to even interface with the world outside. The energies are just too much. You pick up on other people's feelings, emotions, and that all clouds your atmosphere. So there's a way of work my intuition development workshop, but there's a way of working with your intuition and your empathy so that you don't absorb. You you read, but you don't absorb and you don't start identifying with it. And um, there's a way of doing that. So this is what you need to learn is how to see the world, but not be of the world in the sense, right? And, but also be able to open up to other people and so that you guys can feel the share the space of feeling and 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 connect through that. So it's a difficult tightrope. It's it's very tricky to walk. And some of you literally feel like you're spanning worlds, like you're the bridge between two worlds. You literally are that bridge. And it's very difficult because you feel like you don't really belong 100% to this world, but you also don't belong 100% to the other world. You're not ready to give everything up and live a completely spiritual life, for example, or what we understand under spirituality. But on the other hand, you're also not willing to live a completely materialistic life where that's all there is. And so you're sitting there contemplating and there's this feeling of a little bit of sadness that comes up where the feeling also arises, is this all there is? Is this all that is? So there's this contemplation of, um, is this all there is to experience? Is this all that I have to offer? Is this all that I have to give? Is this all that I'm supposed to do? And um, this feeling of restriction almost, right? You could be so unlimited. So what's the solution here? There's a certain sacrifice that you're going to have to make. And this is the two of swords. This is where you test your faith. You know, you, you push yourself to the limits of your faith. You push yourself to the limits of what you can believe in, the limits of what you can um, grasp, the limits of what you can know. And it's, it's almost as if you have to keep pushing yourself. And so some of you may be doing daredevil things, or you may be pushing things out, procrastination, but what your soul is really doing is it's pushing its limits. What can I achieve? What can I accomplish? What can I do? What can I live? What can I, but sometimes you feel as if life is also asking too much of you, like too much 
to for the little things that you can that you obtain from it the little bits of wisdom the little bits of insight you're like the price is way too steep so there's this um figuring things out you know what is what is worth it for you as you go here then you have the six of wands so this has to do with success and this is a promise from spirit that, you know, there's going to continue down your pathway because you're going to be successful. You're going to have success. And this development path that you're doing, it's it's going to be written down in the archives, in the archives of your soul, in the Akashic records. It's going to become a guideline for others, but also it's part of the DNA records and also part of the collective records. So it's very important that you continue on your pathway because you're not just doing this for yourself. And this information is then disseminated, maybe not through movies, maybe not through books, but we all pick up on things. And so this information is then disseminated through the collective and it really benefits everyone around you and everyone else, but especially those in your um, vibrational frequency, your genetic frequency, your line of descent and your line of yeah, your line of descent, your lineage. So it's it's really important that you continue onwards. Now, lineage is not just on the physical, in the genetics or in the DNA. It's also the, the energy systems or the frequencies because as we are reborn, we often jump into different family lines and family structures, right? So we don't stay in the same genetic family. Not all of us, some of us do, some of us don't, right? So, but it's a not a necessary fact that we do that. But um, so don't get too, too, too hooked on the DNA stuff because in one life you're born in one family and culture and tribe and in another, you're in a completely different. But that, um frequency of consciousness that frequency that that you tend to inhabit stays the same throughout lifetimes like your song your soul song is the same that's how spirit recognizes you by that core vibration of your being and so that work this work that you're doing right here right now it's benefiting that frequency as well it's benefiting those that are on that same vibratory frequency as well so it feels as if, you know, there's there's um, a deep contemplation cycle that's happening for you right now. And but how it's manifesting on, on the soul level, but how it's coming up and out is that you're really feeling, where's my tribe? Where do I belong? And spirit is saying, continue on your pathway because they're going to find you by you being authentically yourself. You're going to find people that are going to cheer you on, that are going to push you on, that are going to see you for who you are and see you for what you're doing. They're going to be your not necessarily fans because fan connects to fanatic, right? And we don't want fanatics, <laughs> but, uh, and you don't want to be anybody's fanatic, but um, you want to have people that, that genuinely support you, but they can only genuinely support you if they're the right people for you. And they can only be the right people for you if you are completely and truthfully your authentic self. So this is just a, a message of boosting you, of saying, yes, continue on your authentic pathway, continue being your authentic self, continue being you. Continue doing how you do, doing what you do. Continue learning the way you learn. Fall in love with how you learn, how you make decisions, how you accomplish things, how you um, process information, how you do all that. Fall in love with that. And you'll see that other people are going to fall in love with you too. They're going to understand how you work. They're going to undersee you for who you are and really appreciate that and cheer you on. And slowly you're going to find the right people to connect with. And the ones that don't belong to you, they weed themselves out. They literally weed themselves out by just you being you. You just saying what you feel, you just expressing who you are in that moment. You just um, living that energy in order for that energy to transform. You have to acknowledge it. You have to live it. And a lot of people, they don't get that. They think you can deny it. They think you can push it away. They think you can ignore it. You cannot. You have to live it. You have to express it. You have to transform it. And um, so whatever you're feeling in the moment, whatever you're living, be that. And you'll see how everything that doesn't belong to you just moves out of the way. So it's it's um, 
it's it's really a boost from spirit to continue on your pathway and to keep doing you. You're not alone. You never have been. You never will be. Not truly. And you're doing a great job. Take care. Bye. <laughs>